Hello, Pipil. Thank you so much and welcome back. And in today's session, we are going to learn about how to do the cost benefit analysis, which generally we call as a hard saving. So we call as a hard savings, which we calculate with the help of financial technique is called as a capital budgeting techniques. What are the capital budgeting techniques we have? So we are going to learn about how to calculate PV, which is stand for present value. And if you are expecting the cash in future, so this is the value of future cash today. What the cash you are going to get in future, what is the value of that today is called your present value. Second thing we are going to learn about the FV, which is stand for future value. In case you are investing some cash somewhere today and based on the capital gain or the rate of growth or the interest rate, what will be the value of that cash in future? Value, value in future is your future cash, future value, value of today cash in future. We'll be learning about the net present value NPV. And what is the net present value? Net present value is your sum of present value minus investment. In case you have done any investment, like as how much money you put, we'll be learning about IRR, which is stand for internal rate of return. What is the internal rate of return? It's simple. When your N present value, net present value, your NPV is zero. So what rate your NPV is becoming zero is called your internal rate of return. We'll be learning about the payback period. What is the payback period? Payback period is when it's a break even point, which means no profit, no loss. The number or the amount when it becomes zero, zero, neither you have a profit nor your loss, your whatever the investment you have done, you got that 100% return of that. That means it's a payback period. Let's take with a simple example about the present value of the future cash flow. You are expecting something. Let's say you have expected an offer from a company. Company is telling you, I will be offering you, let's say, joining bonus of maybe $5,000 company is going to offer you joining bonus of $5,000. But these $5,000, they are going to offer you maybe after, let's say, three years. Now you wanted to find out if they are offering me this $5,000 after three years. What should be the right amount if I ask them to offer me today? Because $5,000, if it is after three years, so what will be the value of that today, which means present value of future cash flow. So you can negotiate with them that instead of offering me 5,000, you can give me less amount, but give me today and I will be happy. So as per the rate of growth, what you are expecting, let's say your rate of growth, which is also called as an opportunity cost is assuming, let's say 10%. 10% opportunity cost means your money you are expecting to grow year on a basis as in 10%. So if I want to find out the present value of this, so the formula which we use for the present value PV is equal to, you have the future value. This will be divided by 1 plus rate of return and for how many number of years that much power it will be. So PV stands for present value, 
F stands for future value. In this case, present value, we have to find out. My future value, I'm expecting $5,000. One plus R is the rate of return, which is 1.10 will become here. And timeline N is equal to three. So if I put these value into this formula, so my present value will be your future value is 5,000. See here, divide by one plus rate of return 10%. And this is for three years after you are going to get. So for three years, what will be? And you are getting a value of 3756. So 3756 is the present value of your future cash flow. You can ask your employer, boss, I really do not need $5,000. You can save your money, maybe around how much? Let's say you can save this money. $1,240, I offer you the discount. This is the discount rate at 10% if I'm taking. And you just give me 3756, but you give me today and I will be happy. This is the way we calculate the present value of any future cash flow. Another example, if I take, let's say you do some investment. Let's say you are giving a loan to a friend. And maybe suppose you are giving five thousand dollar only and your friend is returning your money after two years so if the rate or the opportunity cost is ten percent ideal condition how much money your friend should return to you minimum amount so instead of five thousand your friend must return you some bigger amount so how much should be that amount you want to calculate so that will be calculating by the future value fv stand for future value you just transform this formula which is the present value formula and you will be getting the future value out of this so how so formula for future value will be is equal to you have the present value instead of dividing by one plus r you will be multiplying this by one plus r and just take the power for the number of years if I want to calculate for this, so my future value will be, you first take the present value, multiply it with 1 plus rate of return is 10%. And this thing is for 2 years after the person is returning. So this will be power 2. What I got? 6,050. So if your friend is returning you the same 5,000 amount after 2 years, which means you are in loss, of how much loss you are going to wear, you are in loss of $1,050. Because your money is growing, all the opportunity is there, is 10% growth. This is what we will be calculating the future value. I hope I am making you clear. Now the next thing comes, net present value, which is the sum of all present value minus investment. So this thing will happen when you have the multiple years are there and every year you are getting some return. Suppose let's say you wanted to invest in a business, any business, maybe somebody is asking you, can you invest some money in my business? And you have done the investment. Investment, you have done these, let's say $5,000 again. So this investment you have done an year zero. So here is an investment. This is your, let me say, 5,000 is your investment. So this 5,000, if you calculate the amount and suppose this is on the year, let's say here I will be talking about the return. So this money goes out. So we always keep this money as a negative because in the year one, if I say this is your year, in the first year you have invested, which is considered as a zero, $5,000 you have invested. So your return is negative on the first year. Now on the year one, your friend is promising or the business is promising you that every year I am going to return you $2,000. You are happy that for continuously five years, I will be getting the $2,000. So if you look as a simple layman calculation, 5,000 was the investment, 10,000 return you got. 
So the difference of this value will be 5,000. You are in profit if I take the sum. So you will be really happy that I am in the 5,000 of profit. But actually, this is not exactly the 5,000. Because there is a something is called as an opportunity cost. And what is the opportunity cost? We have taken 10% as a sample. So let's say this is your 10% sample. Opportunity cost. What I was telling, this is your sum of all present value minus investment. So first you have to calculate sum of all the present value which you are going to get year after year. So these are your all, all future value. So you have to convert these future value which you are going to get after one year, two year, three year, four year into the present value. So your present value 5000 because you are investing on the year zero. So this will remain same. Nothing changes here. But what 2000 you are going to get after one year? If you want to convert this into today's value. So present value is equal to future value. Divide by 1 plus rate of return. Rate of return is 10%. And this will be for how many years? Power after one year, you are going to get it. So the value of the amount which you will get after two years, actually it is, sorry, after one year, it is equal to 1818. The similar way you calculate for the two years after, so present value is equal to future value, divide by one plus rate of return, which is your 10%. And the power of this, you can say number of years and the number of years this time is two. This two years. And I, the value what you will get after two years as in 2000 with the 10% rate of growth is actually equal to 1652. And the same thing I do for year three, year four and year five. And this is what my value is coming. So what is my net present value? Net present value is the sum of all present value, which is positive. Minus initial investment, you have negative. If you take the sum of positive and negative, actually this is $2581. Which can be calculated with a simple formula of NPV, net present value. How? These are the present value. These are the years. So if I put the formula here, suppose let's say, net present value is equal to NPV, sorry, NPV is equal to, you will be taking, either you take the NPV first, like this, you select the rate of return, you select the, all these values on the year on year basis and close the bracket. And minus you do the investment. So this value is coming how much? 717581. And minus you do the investment. How much investment was there? This value is the 5000. Is already in negative. So either you can do the pause plus to this value. 5000 because this value is negative. Symbol will change. You will get the same 2581. Or if your value you already did not put as a negative. You can pick up this positive value here. And here the symbol will change. Whatever you want to do. And you will get the same value. So net present value can be calculated with the formula. Or net present value, you can take the sum of all present value minus initial investment, you will get it. Now the another thing we do in the capital budgeting is called as an IRR. IRR stands for internal rate of return. Internal rate of return is what? When your net present value is zero. So how I will see if I start increasing because my net present value is coming positive here, which means my business is profitable. My investment, what I'm going to do, if my net present value is coming greater than zero or positive, that means it's a wealth investment. So how much is the return I'm getting? If I just simply say that your expected was 10%, but you are getting positive value, which means you are getting more than 10%. How much you are getting? Let me just change this net present value and see how your, let me change the opportunity cost and just see the highlighted blue, how this value will be changing. So I'm making it 15% because I have to make it zero. 
Zero is what? Net present value. When the net present value becomes zero, that is your internal rate of return. So if I make it 15%, it's still positive. If I make it 20%, it's still positive. If I make it 25%, it's still positive. If I make it to 27%, it's still positive. If I make to 29%, let's say, oh, it's become negative, which means it is in between 28 and 29. Let me make it to 28.5, little positive. Let me make it to 28.8, um, become 28.8. Eight percent is negative, so twenty-eight point seven percent is still negative. Twenty-eight point six percent, little positive, so twenty-eight point six five. If I make almost zero, so what return I got? I got approximately twenty-eight point six five percent. Approximately, you can see. So I'm just changing this value. I'm just copy paste this as a value here, right? Just for the reference purpose. And now you will see if I make it back to the same value as in 10%, how I'm going to get this value. So there is a formula for internal rate of return is equal to IRR. What it is asking, it is asking for the value of all positive and negative. So you select all the value, the investment and the return. Put your comma. It is asking for the gas. Gas means the opportunity cost. Close the bracket and you got the same value here. What we have calculated manually. 628.65 or 28.64. This is what the way we calculate the internal rate of return. The last thing I'm going to explain you about the payback period, which is the break-even point. So let's see here, your total investment here was the 5,000 on the year zero. So what you are getting at the end of the day, what is in hand you have? You have 5,000 minus, correct? So this 5,000 will be here, negative. Now, the next year you are having 2000 plus cash. So, year one, if I see, I got the 2000 of return. So, in hand cash is now still I am 3000 minus. Next year, 3000 minus plus you are going to get 2000 more. So, in hand cash after two years, I have still 1000 minus. Still, I have to recover this 1000. Next year, again, I got 2000. So, in hand cash is 1000 positive. So, now my break even in between second and the third year. In between two and three years, I have a break even. So, actually, 1000 was my negative value. I have to recover 1000 and actually, I recover 2000 in the next year. So, this 2000 of amount I recovered over the period of 12 months. Where? Every month I am recovering 166 and I have to recover only this 1000. So how much time I will take to recover this 1000 is six months. Okay. I already spent zero, one and two years plus six months are here. So my break even point or my, what is the value? Payback period. I will be getting at two years and six month. This is the way we calculate the payback period. So I hope you understood what is the present value, what is the future value, what is your net present value, how do we calculate, how do we calculate internal rate of return and how do we calculate the payback period. Thank you so much for your time and I'll see you in the next session.